The territories of Syria and Lebanon are becoming the main location of the Iran-Israel war. Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei has vowed to punish the evil regime of Israel after the attack on the consular building in which Mohammad Reza Zahedi, a high-ranking commander of the Quds Force, the elite foreign operational wing of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, was assassinated. In Israel, political leaders as well as military and diplomatic officials said they were ready for any scenario. Asked if it was Israel that carried out the attack, Michael Ronan, head of South and Southeast Asia Division at Israel's Ministry of Foreign Affairs said, they say Israel carried out the strike. Well, I don't know. What I can say is that Israel is ready for any response from Iran. In this condition, after years of engaging in shadowy tit-for-tat operations, Iran and Israel's unofficial battle in Syria has been thrust out into the open by an unprecedented attack in the Syrian capital that killed several top Iranian advisors. Now, even with Israel already mired in the longest and deadliest ever war with Palestinians, Facing ongoing clashes with Hamas and constant fire from Iran-aligned axis of resistance factions from at least four nations, the Iran-Israel indirect war taking place on the sidelines of the war in Gaza threatens to become the main event. It's very important to differentiate between the level of hostility we have witnessed so far and the potential for a full-fledged regional war. Eren Edzion, former head of policy planning at the Israeli Foreign Ministry and deputy head of the Israeli National Security Council, told Newsweek, It's very, very different. For Israel, the situation has presented a strategic dilemma for Israeli leadership, as observed by Edzion. That is, to what extent do we attempt to directly attack Iran rather than simply attack its various proxies, including the ones in Syria? In addition to the hundreds of strikes conducted by Israel against Syria over the course of at least a decade, he pointed out how, throughout the years, Israel has taken some actions on Iranian soil, for some it has taken responsibility and for some it has not. Mustafa Najafi, an Iranian researcher specializing in Middle East conflicts and Iran's foreign policy, argued Tehran had already outlined its reaction to what may come next. Part of this response is done directly by Iran, which is, of course, limited, Najafi said. A major part is also more intense by resistance groups in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon and Yemen. The location of the answer also includes both inside Israel and the assets of this regime outside the occupied territories. The Persian Gulf, the Arab countries, the Oman Sea and the Mediterranean will be the target areas outside of Israel. Residents of Russian Orenburg City are furious and threaten Kremlin with rallies. The outskirts of the Russian city of Orenburg are rapidly going under the water. Residents are furious and threaten rallies already in the capital of the region, writes the Mozem Obyaznit Telegram Channel. According to the governor of the region, Denis Pasler, the water level in the Ural River is approaching a record high of 11 meters. The head of the region urged residents of flooded areas to evacuate. Hundreds of houses in the vicinity of Orenburg and several city districts with a population of half a million have already gone underwater. The Mozem Obyaznit Telegram Channel contacted the victims. Everything is only getting worse. Worse, the house is sinking, says Yulia Selina, who lives in the village of Veseni, a 30-minute drive from Orenburg. Many are flooded and the leadership is inactive. Everyone is silent. The younger son was pulled out through the window. We were able to get out through the door, Julia continues. My son was very scared. We just made repairs, bought furniture and all that stuff. The situation is aggravated by the clove in the village where meltwater flows and which the authorities did not clean up before the flood, ignoring the requests of residents. Promised payments for recovery will not be enough. No one takes into account the damage to the house, not to mention furniture, repairs, equipment, things. We didn't take anything out. I'm not the only one. People will not be satisfied. So there will be a rally, she promises. Valeria, whose house was flooded in the village of Zarechny, works in the regional administration. On April the 10th, the water approached her house and the yard completely flooded in a few minutes. As a resident of the region, of course, I believe that the payments are too small and do not cover losses. But as a civil servant, I assume that these are only primary payments, she says. Here is what the residents of Orenburg write in local publics and on the page of Governor Pasler. The special water operation is going according to plan. Why are the payments to victims so ridiculous? People have lost everything because of the negligence of officials. People don't have houses, but you give 20,000? Do they have to live on it? Feed the children? 
Thank you to the Orenburg City Hall for spending the budget on lanterns instead of engineering protection of the city.